Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is calling for extreme action to put a check on the Supreme Court after their rulings striking down affirmative action in Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. We have justices saying that the Supreme Court is going themselves much too far. They are expanding their role into acting as though they are Congress itself. We really must be focusing on the danger of this court and the abuse of power in this court. There also must be impeachment on the table. The Supreme Court has not been receiving the adequate oversight necessary in order to preserve their own legitimacy. Brewer. So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. When we question, you know, some of these three letter organizations, it's a terrible thing. You know, we're, we're right wing extremists, yada, yada, yada. But when the left questions the Supreme Court, it's OK. Right. Does that make sense? Am, am I am I getting this right? Second thing, second thing. When the Supreme Court says we're not going to decide on uh, who, you know, has access to abortion or whatever, we want the states to decide. The government shouldn't, you know, big brother government shouldn't be involved in that. Your, your, your local government should should be uh, in, in charge of that. Who, who you elect in your specific area, in your state, should be more responsible for that. Not us. That's a bad thing. That's the court, Supreme Court overstepping their boundaries. Them saying, we don't have the power to decide. Y'all decide. Y'all vote for who y'all want to decide on those decisions. Go ahead. Do your thing. That's, that's, that's bad? Hmm. Quite interesting if I do say so myself. <laughs> that is just... And if you, even if you want to take it a step further, affirmative action. <clears throat> Congress said, that's unconstitutional. Judging some someone based on the color of their skin is a bad thing. You know, like the guy who had a dream that said he would rather be judged by the content of, or have people judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. The Supreme Court actually agreed with that guy, and that's a terrible thing. I thought that's what we were striving to do, to not see color. I'm, I'm Asking. I'm just asking. Last thing before we hop back into the video, I'm gonna let y'all go. By the way, happy 4th of July if you're watching this on the day of release. Thank you for tuning in with your boy. I greatly appreciate it. All right, share this with your friends and family that you're sitting around. Don't hey, don't don't keep me your biggest secret, okay? Don't keep me your biggest secret. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. But last thing, if you want to talk about student uh, debt loan forgiveness, the Supreme Court basically said no. Joe Biden doesn't have the legal standing to just decide these folks get their loans paid off. Congress has to decide on that. AOC has to decide on that, not just Joe and his administration. AOC and her Democrat comrades have to actually do their jobs, not just Joe or not us, the Supreme Court. So two out of the last three situations that have gone down, the Supreme Court basically said no. Not us. Y'all decide that. But the Supreme Court is overstepping their bounds? No, I think the Supreme Court is actually um, just not making the decisions that you would have hoped. So you're trying to paint it as if they're overstepping their bounds? I, I think that's the actual picture, but maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comment section, please. CEO Jack Brewer joins us now. Jack, good morning to you. Quite the comment from the congresswoman there. She's accusing the Supreme Court of overreach, abuse of power. But if you look at what the Supreme Court is actually doing, they're decentralizing power in the case of abortion, handing it back down to the states. In the case of student loan debt, uh, the Supreme Court, Jack, is saying that Congress needs to make that decision in which a congresswoman, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is a member of. <laughs> That's exactly right with the Supreme Court. Bro, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. And it, 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 it baffles me that AOC can even get up there and say the stuff that she's saying. Is doing is actually sticking to the Constitution, uh, which seems extreme to many uh, today because for years we've seen uh, things move so far to the left. When you talk about the Supreme Court ruling on, on sexuality and marriage and abortion and all these things in the past um, where they essentially uh, did not go by uh, the Constitution, now they're doing that. And I think they're doing an amazing job uh, with they're actually bringing some balance back to America uh, when we're seeing so much craziness 
happen around us. Uh, it, it's, it's really refreshing uh, to see a Supreme Court actually stand for the document um, that's, that's helped found this nation. Well, I, I mean, it seems like according to this new poll, this ABC poll, it asked if they uh, approved of the SCOTUS decision restricting the use of race as a factor in college. 52% approved, 32% disapproved, 16% <clears throat> don't know, but going a little deeper in. I mean, even if you want to add in this 16% from the don't know into uh, the disapprove, you still don't get to your 52 Remember Uncle Trump said the silent majority? Remember that? The silent majority? Now, this is before I was even on the Trump train, right? This is when I was still a Democrat, but I still remember him saying that. The silent majority. There you go. More evidence. I'm just saying. And that's assuming that all of this 16, if they had to decide, would go here. And it still doesn't equal 52. And I'm sure some of this 16 would go up here. Come on now. I'm just saying. That poll, Jack, uh, what was interesting to me was that 58% of independent voters who responded to that said they approved. What's that tell you about the, the state of our country? That there's more of us than there are of them. And that's what they're afraid of. That's why they push so hard. Uh, it tells you that people are sick and tired of talking about skin color. Uh, the fact that I come that on the show and, and I have to be looked at as, as just a black man before you, you listen to a word come out of my mouth. Uh, that is the culture that we've created. You know, but we can't, we, we can't deny the fact that it was sad that we even needed an affirmative action plan because they wouldn't let black people in college years ago. Uh, but now those things have changed. And I think uh, the fact that you're forcing universities uh, to look at race and the color of their skin, you know, that's the exact Exactly the reason we have the generation that we have now. Everything that happens, uh, it, it, it's not about uh, the issues. Now it's become about your identity, uh, and I think that's a sad thing. Um, I, I think what the Supreme Court did was to give, uh, it really, truly give um, the decision making back to the parents and the teachers and the universities. Mm -hmm. You know, you can still let kids in based upon poverty levels, and that's really what we should be looking at in our nation. We should be giving opportunity to those that are the least of these, just like the Bible tells us to do. The Bible doesn't tell us uh, to, to go out and pick and choose based on race. It tells us to help our poor brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. and we can still do that at colleges and universities, and that's what really matters. Let's uplift people out of poverty and start a, instead of teaching a generation to look at race. And I'll tell you another thing. The next step the Supreme Court needs to do in this country is we need to remove the race box from all of our identity across the board. We're the only country in the world that forces people to talk about their skin color. My kids are Persian and black um, and, and European. They're mixed with everything. And so now they're confused because they don't have a box that particularly says where, where, their, where their parents are from. Mm -hmm. Picking and choosing skin color uh, is what's destroying this nation. And I really hope these presidential candidates start to address this mess well, so we can end all this racial division. Jack, speaking of the presidential candidates, five GOP presidential hopefuls uh, gave speeches at the Moms for Liberty event in Philadelphia this weekend. Moms for Liberty, of course, is an organization that champions school choice and parents' rights in education. Let's take a listen to what some of those candidates had to say. They will never forget, don't mess with America's moms. We don't subcontract our leadership out to woke corporations. We stand for parents and we stand for kids. Our kids need to know. To Bro, I, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I get it, you know. We got some Floridians watching, but I, I can't I can't get behind DeSantis. And every time that I see him, I'm going to boo. I'm going to boo. And I, I'm in the majority, as far as I know, because there have been, a, well, one, the polls. <laughs> one, the polls. I mean, Trump is leading DeSantis by like 40 points. It's, it, it, it's insane. It's crazy. And at one point, DeSantis was in the lead. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, but every time I scroll through social media and I come across, you know, a DeSantis post, like, and you guys can go look at look look at it <clears throat> yourself. You don't even have to take my word. Don't take. Matter of fact, don't take my word. Just go on social media and look at Ron DeSantis' post. Just 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 read the comments. Just read the comments every single time. Yeah, I like Ron, but no, 
not for president, or nah, Ron, Ron the Sanctimonious, or Ron the, the Establishment, no, Ron, you sound too much like a politician, I can't trust you, <laughs> like, <laughs> people are going after this man, after this man, and I, I, I don't know, I, I, I just feel like he is a plant, that's just the way that I feel, and I'm not the only one, so I know that I'm not insane or crazy to feel that way, there's just something about him that just, that just reeks of, just, just, Bow, you know, just, mm. I, I, I can't quite pinpoint it, you, you ever, you ever like, uh, smell some roadkill, you're like, man, I can't, I can't pinpoint, like, where it's coming from or something, but I, I smell it, what in the world, like, goodness gracious, I think it's funky, where is it, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> that's the way I feel about Ron, like, I don't know exactly if, if it's him hanging out with the bushes, you know, or allegedly just, just, just getting donor money from some, some shady characters or the way that he talks or maybe it's just a combination of everything. I think that, that, I think that's what it is. Just the combination of all of these little, these, 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 these little red flags, just all, they're just all over the place. And I just can't help but to just, nope, nope, never. Like I, I, I won't support DeSantis in 28. I'm, I'm telling you that now. I won't support him in 28. Like the the from the moment he ran, he he was he was done for me. Done. That's just my humble opinion and I, hey, y'all can disagree with me. That's that's fine. Um we're not here to create an echo chamber unlike, you know, some people would, you know, like to do on the other side of the political aisle. We're not here to create an echo chamber. So, hey, if you disagree with me, I'm 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 open to hear what you have to say, obviously. But um yeah, can't do it. Can't do it. Love America. They need to be saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Making decisions for your children that make sense for them. We will shut it down, starting with agencies that should not exist, like the U.S. Department. I like Vivek. I do like Vivek, though, for sure. I wouldn't mind him being a vice or working in the Trump administration on some type of level, or even Vivek being the president in 28. <clears throat> I'd take him over Ron DeSantis, in all honesty. But y'all let me know how y'all feel. I, I, I would take him over Ron DeSantis. Like a Vivek, uh, Byron Donalds ticket. I, actually, I, I really like that. I really like that. Vivek Ramaswamy in Byron Donalds 2028. You, you can interchange who's president and who's vice. Nah. Don't really matter to me, but I kind of like that ticket. I kind of like it. It's got a nice ring to it. But y'all let me know how you feel. Of education. How important, Jack, do you think the education issue will be in 2024? And what changes would you, someone who works with children on a day-to-day -day basis, like to see? You know, this is the most critical issue that we're facing right now, uh, and I think these candidates, uh, they should be applauded because they are addressing uh, the issues that are, are destroying our, our nation at its core. Um, but when you start to look deeply in what's going on in our education system, uh, it's gotta, it, it has to go to the public school level. You know, one issue that you have when you just focus on the parents is that some kids don't have parents, and when we have a fatherlessness crisis like we have in our nation with over 24.5 million fatherless kids, it's time for us also to start looking out for those kids that don't have parents involved uh, that will stand up for them because that's what's destroying the country. Mm -hmm. that's, those are the kids that you see, the 28 that just got shot in Baltimore and every mm -hmm. other weekend. Those are the kids that need help of those fatherless children. And so I encourage uh, these Republican candidates, Democratic mm -hmm. re candidates, start addressing this issue uh, because it is the cancer of America. It's causing us uh, to have violence. It's causing us to have poor educational outcomes comes with kids that don't have any reading and math proficiencies throughout, you know, dozens and dozens of high schools in, si in each city yeah. don't have kids that are reading, reading and math proficient. Yeah, absolutely. And so Jack, we really it's such have an important to address that. Topic and the fatherlessness uh, issue is something that Larry Elder constantly brings up every single interview. Uh, that's his number one focus. Uh, so we'll see if it catches on and more of the candidates talk about that as well. Jack, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us and happy Fourth of July. Yeah, I agree. Fatherlessness is a huge issue. Huge issue. Um, 
I mean, and it's not to say that moms aren't important or mothers aren't important, aren't important uh, because they are right. It's a yin and a yang. We both play a role in the raising of a child, but fathers more so, I feel, you know, in the teens, you know, when kids actually start to get mobile and start to really get their friends circle and they really can start to get into some things. That's when I feel like the dad is most important. The dad reigns all that back in, you know, um, fatherless kids, man, are always influenced by the crowd, always influenced by the crowd. You see it all the time. I mean, we've all been in high school before, right? <clears throat> We all know we all know the class clowns that did all the dumb stuff. How many of them actually had a dad around them? Think about that. Think about that. Like a strong father figure. Not just somebody that was just there. I guess I should have said that, you know? Because there's a difference between like being there but actually being involved in, you know, your life. There's a difference. Big difference. And, you know, looking back on it. Yeah, I don't recall ever really seeing some of the worst of the worst kids' dads anywhere. They they might have popped up, you know, from time to time. You know, you go over to their house and, oh, hey, yeah, how, how you doing, Mr., uh, you know, whatever kind of thing. But that was about it. It's the only time you ever really saw them. Didn't see them at sporting events. Didn't see them, you know, when you would catch them out somewhere, you know, never, ever. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely think that's a really, really important issue that needs to be solved. <clears throat> but then as far as the schooling goes, school choice is a big thing that I think needs to be implemented. But then also the curriculum needs to be there needs to be a change in the change in the curriculum. 100%, tenfold. All of the extra fluff needs to be gone. Anything that doesn't have to do with reading, writing, science, math, or financial literacy, right? Because I think that's important as well. Financial literacy. You can teach about money. I mean, that's real life. I think that's very, very important, at least, at least on its basic level. You don't have to go like super in depth or anything like that, but Everything on its basic level in term in terms of financial literacy, I think should be should be taught in school and there should be, you know, a designated. It should be intentional, not just a, you know, the conversation kind of came up, the, the moment arrived, so yeah, we're gonna throw it in here. No, like it should be an intentional lesson plan where you're talking about financial literacy, in my humble opinion. Uh, but then also, also, do kids say the Pledge of Allegiance anymore? Let me know in the comment section. Because I remember saying the Pledge of Allegiance every morning. Every morning. That needs to be brought back in schools and mandated. Yeah, people are going to fight. People are going to fuss. Oh, you're old dictator, dictator, dictator. I, I, I don't think that's being a dictator saying the Pledge of Allegiance every morning. Don't think so. Don't think so. And any teachers that don't want to do so, um, see the door. See the door. We don't need you teaching our future. We need people who are proud of the country that they live in. You don't have to be satisfied with everything that's going on. Like, of course, the country isn't perfect. No place on earth is or ever will be. Come on. Like, it, that, that it's fine that you don't that you aren't 100 percent satisfied with where America is, but you should be proud of your country. You shouldn't be ashamed or, or, or you shouldn't, uh, uh, you know, not want to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I, I just don't understand that there, there's people that have shed their blood and lost their lives for us all to have the opportunity to be free in this country. And I, I, I don't know, that's that's just my humble opinion on it. Y'all can let me know how you feel. Obviously, I know not everybody's going to agree with that statement, but I, I, I think that's important. That, that I think that's something that's important that can, um, you know, bring us all back together. Right. I feel like I feel like we've been 
pulled apart farther and farther to the point where now it's going to be controversial to say, hey, let's say the Pledge of Allegiance every morning. Like now I feel like that's a controversial statement to, you know, uh, some folks mainly on the left, which is just crazy to me because it's the country you live. Um, but then also I think uh, President Trump, when he gets back in office, should propose a uh, bill that would allow for anyone who didn't want to live in the U.S., to leave it'll be taxpayer funded i'm fine with that i'm sure a lot of you would be fine with that but y'all let me know in the comment section should he should propose a bill that will be taxpayer funded that would allow anyone who does not want to live in america that thinks america is a terrible place to leave you will get a one-way ticket to wherever you want plus two months of rent but you must renounce your citizenship to the u.s and you can't have it back. That's the way that I see it. What do y'all think? Y'all think that's a good bill? Y'all let me know. But anyway, I've taken up enough of your time today. Thank you guys as always for spending your time with me today. Especially on a day like today. It's the fourth, baby. America. <laughs> America, baby. America. Um, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe out there. And I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Peace and love. I'm out.